No. On here, you know? After having an additional CUP, save it some Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the July 6, 2016 meeting of the Frederick County Planning Commission. And I'd ask that you join us in a moment of silence, please. Thank you. We have no changes to the agenda. Madam Chair, I move for adoption. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. And we have minutes for June the 1st. Uh, move for approval of the minutes of June the 1st, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Time for committee reports. Uh, I believe um, from our uh, point of view, we have just one from us, and that's Mr. Unger from the Sanitation Authority. Yes, ma'am. We met uh, June the 22nd. Uh, Mike Newland gave a report on the water situation now. The quarries are up, but they're still low from where he'd like to see them, but they have risen a good bit with the rain we've got. And we are buying about 2 million gallon of water a day from Winchester, which is a lot more than we was, but it's the reason our, our quarries are coming back up too is because we are purchasing more water from them. And uh, we used about 5.4 million gallon of water per day last month, which is about normal. That's pretty much what we've been doing. And Greystone Industrial Park is trying to get another sewer line into their park and so. What we're going to have to do is bore a line under the railroad tracks and Greystone is following up with taking care of trying to get that done and Frederick County is or the sanitation department is, is with them or backing them to try to get that to happen because they need another sewer source in there. And uh, the other one of the other problems we're having, we're still having a problem with Hood on our discharge and we have talked with them. And what they've agreed to do is get an engineer look at that because they're stopping the sewer lines up. Uh, the waste they're producing is getting to the Parker's Mill plant and it's damaging things. We got a hauler in there that has actually refused to haul the stuff out of there, so it's so bad on his equipment. So they have agreed to get an engineer to get this straightened out and get it filtered before it gets into our system. So hopefully they'll do that. And just for a short note, um, in the last several months, they have really got aggressive with the things they're doing there, looking for water. And I'm very, very proud of the way that place is being operated. That's good. So yeah. that's going real good. Right. That's what we have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have this evening, um, Shelley Wolf from the Winchester Planning Commission, hi. Hi there, hi. Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. We had five agenda points last meeting. We tabled for 60 days an ordinance to rezone approximately 64 acres of land containing approximately 149 parcels to be included in the Corridor Enhancement District. Additionally, we declined a request of milestone communications for a conditional use permit for a telecommunication facility at 48 South Purcell Avenue. Also, Daniel Morgan Middle School would be that. Um, we unanimously passed the following three items, which was a CUP for a single family detached dwelling on Shawnee Drive, um, an ordinance to res revise the proffers associated with seven acres of land at 501 West Jubal Early Drive also the Valley Proteins building to include the um, to the proffers revision seeks to add telecommunication facilities to the list of uses allowed on the parcel. And additionally, we approved a request um, of Chantel on behalf of Friendship Fire and Rescue Company to for a conditional use permit for a telecommunication facility at 627 North Pleasant Valley Road. That will be a 100 foot tower, but it will be completely enclosed. And those are all our updates. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, now we have Mr. Dunn from the Board of Supervisors. Thank you, Madam Chairman. 
On June 22nd, the Board of Supervisors um, supported three items that had previously been before this board. The first was the conditional use permit 0416 for Vicki Nash, which was the, sale, the nail saloon, and that um, passed without objection. The second one was an ordinance um, to permit the division from the rural uh, preservation roads for public, for public roads and for utilities. It's a slight increase, which was before uh, this board. That was passed by the board. And the third was to rezone the Semples property to modify some proffers. Uh, they, were not, they were minor and to update that, um, that, that item. That's it. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. This is the time on our agenda. If there is a citizen who would like to speak to us regarding anything that is not on the agenda, we'd be delighted to hear it. Well, seeing no one, we will close the citizen comment portion. Our first item is a public hearing. It's conditional use permit 05-6 for Edwin Elvira, which is as submitted for a retail uh, nursery slash landscaping store. The property is located at 1590 Fairfax Pike, White Folks, Virginia, and is identified with property identification number 871B in the Opecan Magisterial District. Uh, thanks, Mr. Klein. Yeah. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Commission. For those of you who have not met formally, I'm, my name is Tyler Klein. I'm a new addition to the Planning and Development Department. Um, I've been here since April, and this is uh, a conditional use permit. As uh, the Chair said, uh, located at 1590 Fairfax Pike in White Post in the Opecan Magisterial District. The applicant is seeking a retail nursery and landscaping establishment at this location. It is currently a 10-acre site. Uh, presently zoned RA, a rural area. The site is currently vacant as a nursery, but it does include a single family detached residence. Um, many of you may be familiar with this site. It was the former location of the Hal Bay Nursery. Um, that site has been, has been vacant of that use for more than a year, which requires a new conditional use permit to reestablish that, that use. Again, the applicant is seeking a retail or wholesale nursery with greenhouses and landscaping displays. Here's a close-up of the property. Um, again, it's south of Route 277. Um, it has one access point from uh, Fairfax Pike. Uh, the applicant does propose uh, putting in a commercial entrance as uh, per the VDOT comments that were received. Um, the site includes the residence, which is in the far west northwest corner, an existing greenhouse, and some outbuildings. Um, the outbuildings will be used for storage. Um, Presently, the applicant does not propose adding any new buildings, but simply um, restoring the greenhouses and using those for their uh, retail nursery purposes. Um, the location of this proposed retail nursery and landscaping is in the part of Frederick County that is planned for future mixed-use commercial and office as part of the Route 277 Triangle, um, as described in the 2030 Comprehensive Plan and the S Southern Frederick uh, Area Plan. The zoning or ordinance does allow for retail, retailing or wholesaling of nursery stock and related products in the RA district through the approval of a conditional use permit. The proposed use, again, will take place within the existing structures on the site. The applicant proposes using the existing farmhouse or residence um, as housing for some of his employees. He will be using the outbuildings for storage of machinery and equipment, and he will be utilizing the greenhouse for the production of nursery stock on site. The applicant will also be installing uh, hardscaping displays um, so that uh, customers who come to the site can, can see the hardscaping and landscaping that's available to them. Um, the use is generally compatible with the surrounding uses. The property is surrounded by existing residential and other vacant agricultural uses, um, and it is uh, consistent with the use that was previously established on this site through the Hal Bay Nursery. Again, that site has been vacant for more than a year, and the reestablishment of that use requires a new conditional use permit. Should the Planning Commission find this use appropriate, staff would recommend the following conditions to which the applicant has agreed. Um, all review agency comments shall be compiled, com complied with at all times. An engineered site plan shall be submitted and approved by Frederick County staff pr uh, prior to the um, prior to the establishment of the use. Um, the applicant is permitted to have one non-illuminated freestanding monument business sign that would be no more than five feet tall and no greater than 50 square feet in area. 
Um, the applicant has agreed that the hours of operation shall be limited to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. Again, that will vary seasonally depending on, uh, you know, the coming and going of the customers. Um, the site should have no more than four employees and any expansion or change in the use would require a new conditional use permit. The applicant, Edwin Alvira, is here this evening and he'd be happy to answer any questions as would staff. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Uh, did you say that the residents on the site will be used by employees as living areas? Correct, the applicant intends to use the existing residents on the site for his employees. Is there a, th that's not on the sanitation system, right? That's a septic system. Correct, the site has a uh, well and septic system. Um, water does run along the site, along 277, but the applicants, this property is not connected to that system, so they would be utilizing a well and a septic. Is there a limit uh, on the septic system on how many people can occupy that residence? I mean, if they're allowed four employees, can they move four families into that residence? Uh, no. And as far as the comment regarding the sanitation system, it, one of the comments from the uh, health department was that they would need to further evaluate the capacity of this site if they were going to move forward with the application. So by getting a site plan, an engineered site plan, they'll have to go back through the commenting through the health department and they can do an assessment of what the capacity is and that will ultimately determine how many people can live on site and how many people can work at the site. Okay, and you, we don't have a condition as on the permit for the number of people, but you feel that the statement that they have to meet all permitting, permitting agencies' comments, that that covers that Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Uh, yes. Uh, do, when we're doing this conditional use permit, and since with this property priorly had a prior conditional use permit, are, are we following the same guidelines? Are these pretty much the same as the old conditional use permit, or is these new conditions here? It's very similar to other retail nurseries that have been approved. Um, the most recent example that you're probably most familiar with would be Horton's Nursery. Similar conditions, similar proposal as far as retail nursery and also the hardscaping. Again, this is a larger larger property and the use is set back further from the road. Uh, I guess what I... Uh, Kevin, I don't think it had a CUP before. I think it was his grandfathered in. Oh, and, that's what and, I'm, I guess. And he is this correct. It, it was grandfathered in. Oh, okay. That's there was, what I was asking. Yeah. Thanks. There thank was you. not an existing conditional use permit on this site prior to this application. Okay, okay thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Sir, would you like to speak with us or just answer any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elvira? Can you come forward, please, sir? <laughs> Good, how are you? Do you understand the concern about the septic system uh, for the house? Uh, yes, I do. Because along that road, there's historically failing septic systems. Okay. And, uh, I'm a little concerned on the number of people that would live in that residence and go on the septic system. So um, you're going to have to check it out before you okay. with, the, with the health department. Okay. Yeah. I look like, yeah. We look like we need to go a little deeper on that. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good. Since he made his way up, is there anyone who wants to comment or ask him anything? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, um, this is a public hearing. <clears throat> Excuse me, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak uh, regarding this conditional use permit? Well, seeing none, we will uh, close the public comment portion on it. Are there any other uh, comments from the Planning Commission? Still. I've never heard anything but good things about uh, Edwin. Everybody that he does work for that I've talked to speaks very highly of him. I guess thinking long term, what Roger's comment was, was concerned me a little bit. You know, the amount of people living there, but it's going to be determined. So I guess I'm okay with it, but I don't think we're going to have a problem at all with what he does there. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think his uh, 
his firm has a very good reputation and uh, you know I've always heard good things about what he does and I just wanted to make sure he understood my concern about the septic uh, system and the, the permitting for that and I think he does so with that I'll go ahead and make a motion that we recommend approval of conditional use permit 0516 for Edwin Alvara second second uh -huh. any other comments Mr. Moan Moan, yes. Dunlap, yes. Triplett, yes. Kenny, yes. Thomas, yes. Oates, yes. Ryan, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Larry, yes. And the chair votes yes. This goes to the Board of Supervisors on July the 27th. Thank you. Our next item is a public hearing item. It is a um, actually a consolidated public hearing between the Virginia Department of Transportation and uh, the Planning Commission here, and it's to consider the update of the 2016-2017 interstate primary and secondary road improvement plans. Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. As you noted, this is our annual update of the interstate primary and secondary road improvement plans, with the key one being the secondary uh, road improvement plan, key in terms of being a, a state code requirement that we go through that every year. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, if I may begin with the interstate road improvement plan, tends to be uh, the simplest for us each year, uh, uh, due to our lack of a plethora of, of interstates. Uh, it doesn't. The plan doesn't tend to change very much, and it hasn't this year either. Uh, you may glance at it and say, "Well, why is Exit 310 still on there?" The reason is, even though there is significant work going on at 310 that we hope is going to be wrapped up, uh, uh, frankly, as, as soon as the end of the year, based on the way it's trending right now, that's still one phase of a three-phase eventual improvement. So. That's going to remain on the plan as well. So if you're hoping for a change next year, don't get too excited. Uh, moving on to the primary road improvement plan, we did make some minor changes to that. Uh, specifically, we added uh, the sections of Route 50 on the east and west side of Winchester, as well as Route 7 on the west, on, I'm sorry, on the east side of Winchester, noting that MPO modeling calls for those to become six lane roadways. Now you may you know, think to yourself, well, it's already pretty close to that wide out in front of the Walmart or, or, or out in front of the Martins at Winchester Gateway. And there are some pieces where we might actually have six through lanes, but in terms of these full segments, we do not. So we're notating that on the plan to be in keeping. Uh, we did make an attempt at the ranking uh, with the Transportation Committee. That's why you see Route 7 being dropped in there in the middle at Priority 4 and Route 50, 5A, um, as 5A and 5B, the different segments. Still above um, South Frederick County Parkway and the commuter park and ride lots that are noted on 7. Of course, on our primary plan, the, the keystone feature continues to be Route 37 and the needed improvements and construction of that. Uh, that continues to be the top priority of the board, and the committee continues to recognize that, followed by 277 uh, east of Stevens City, which, as you're aware, we got a portion of uh, funded uh, through this last uh, action by the Commonwealth Transportation Board, so we're happy to see that happening. And, of course, Route 11 north and south remain on there as well. Moving on uh, to the secondary plan, and as I noted, this is the one of these plans that's that's a code that's a mandated mandated by code. We work with VDOT on, and that's really where the the joint public hearing comes in. Uh, to begin with, we have the major road improvements. Uh, the first, and really the, the kind of keystone project is and has been for that plan for some time, uh, Sulphur Springs Road. Frankly, when I was here before you last year, I was telling you it was fully funded. This year, I'm telling you, it's not fully funded. And it's not because money got cut. Um, VDOT updated the cost estimate, so now we're short of money again. As they got into the right-of-way acquisition process and all that sort of thing, something happened that does tend to happen, and they realize they're off on their numbers, so they've made adjustments to those cost estimates. So there's actually a good chance that as uh, we take our... Um, what are we calling it now, smart scale applications, formerly known as House Bill 2, uh, uh, to the Transportation Committee and Board that will probably be looking at this project as well to try and get that moved along. Uh, the remainder of the projects tend to be spot improvements or in recognition of our own revenue sharing projects, which still make up the lion's share of this list. 
Uh, from there, we move on to our non-hard hard surface road project list, or for to use more uh, simple vernacular, paving of <coughs> unpaved roads. Uh, we were able to promote one road this year when we re-ranked the projects. That one is Hollow Road. Um, that one was fairly timely because that, along with Laurel Grove Road, was one that uh, received quite a bit of attention, of attention when the board had their transportation forum uh, this past winter. That's not why it got promoted. It just sort of worked out because we still do have a rigorous scoring system uh, that the board has not changed. So uh, it's just fortuitous, I guess, for me in terms of the calls coming in. That's one that I can say, well, at least you're on the list. Keeping in mind that these are funded within the scope of projected revenue streams. Those revenue streams turn out to not, to not be true or to get projected downwards. That changes things for us as well. And we've actually added a note uh, to that effect uh, within the plan. Finally, I bring you to the uh, unscheduled list, uh, which is and continues to be our longest list. As I noted earlier, we did do a re-ranking this year, so we had some projects uh, impacted by that in terms of, of movements uh, upward. Most notably, um, three projects that were at the bottom of the list, specifically because they have been added since the last time we did a re-ranking, were Sir John's Road, which now comes in at number 12, Shockeysville Road, which comes in at number 20, and Mount Olive Road, which comes in at number 21. Now, notably, uh, Shockeysville and Mount Olive continue to be at the bottom of the list, but now it's not based on the fact that they just happen to be the last ones added. It's based on the fact that that's just how the scoring turned out. So. Um, for anybody who's interested in more in the scoring, I know I've been into it a number of times, but it includes many things such as accident rates, tra how many trips are on the road, whether a school bus goes down the road on a daily basis, uh, incidents of horizontal and vertical curvature. Um, we're consistently uh, complimented by VDOT for our scoring system that we've used. So uh, it's, it's definitely not uh, a finger in the wind, well, who asked first type deal, although you do get a few points based on how long you've been waiting as well. But it's definitely not a majority of the points. Um, with that, as you noted, it is a public hearing, and uh, I can take any questions that you may have for me. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Bishop? Any? Don't see any, John. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to us regarding these road plans, improvement plans? Well, seeing none, we will close the public hearing. <clears throat> well, we need to make a recommendation. Well, I think John did an excellent job uh, presenting this and making it clear. And I uh, recommend we move it forward to the board. Second. Second, second, second. Stronger? Hunger, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Ryan, yes. Oates, yes. Thomas, yes. Kenny, yes. Triplett, yes. Don Lamp, yes. Moon, yes. And the chair votes, yes. This also will go to the Board of Supervisors on the 27th. Thanks, Mr. Bishop. All righty. Uh, the last item we have. <laughs> Oh, the last item we have is uh, the CEA uh, video, which uh, Mr. Triplett's been involved in. And uh, for presentation, it's Mr. Bishop. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You know, I, in looking at this, John, I thought, that, yes, this is for our information also. But I think it's very important for the public to know that the work has gone on and it's a resource available to them, so. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and as, as many on, on the commission are aware and, and, and uh, maybe not as many more in the public, which is part of why we wanna do this, um, the Conservation Easement Authority has been very um, interested in trying to put together events and um, work pieces that help get the word out, help to educate, help to uh, promote uh, wh whatever uh, adjectives you want to use to try and make people understand conservation easements better. Um, now, and they may get that information, decide it's not for them, but it sure helps to have the information as opposed to work off what can often be rumors and, and, and just uh, sort of sometimes slipshod type, type of items. So part of that and uh, part of how I got pulled in was the creation of this educational video series. Um, so 
here's the road guy with a go with the video but uh, but that's 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 how it worked out we were able to with uh, co with uh, partnership of the Potomac Conservancy uh, we met with folks who had done easements we met with professionals uh, in in the field, whether it be a C CPAs and attorneys such as Ben Butler and uh, and land surveyors, and, and did a number of interviews and put together this video series that will hopefully be of use to people. Um, it's available on our website as well as on the county's YouTube page, and the CEA, uh, the Conservation Easement Authority, is planning to have a number of public outreach. Uh, I guess I'll call them parties uh, type deals uh, in order to kind of put this out in front of people as well. So with that, I'm going to show you just the first segment, which, which is really just sort of a teaser, a commercial, if you will, uh, to kind of gain people's interest in, in what is a total of, of four video series. Since its inception, Frederick County has been an ideal home for those looking to escape the hustle and bustle of more urban areas in exchange for a more rural lifestyle. Many come to start farms and farmettes, and still more to live in subdivisions near these rural and environmental attractions. People also come as tourists from all over to enjoy Frederick County's farm markets, historic features, natural environment, and other attractions. However, in recent decades, Increased growth pressure has led to a much faster pace of development in Frederick County. Land that had historically been family farms has been leveled and developed, with residential subdivisions leading old and new Frederick County residents to wonder what might be done to preserve the county's rural heritage and environmental quality. In this video series, we are going to learn about one tool that can help people asking that question a conservation easement. We're going to meet and talk with county residents who have put conservation easements on their property. We'll also find out what they learned as well as what advice they may have for others. We'll also meet with professionals who help landowners through this process and agencies like the Potomac Conservancy who hold the easements in partnership with the landowners. Most importantly, we'll learn about what easements are and are not so that property owners can learn whether this is the right tool for them and other citizens can determine why this is a program that benefits them even if they do not own land. So stay tuned as we learn together in future installments of Conservation Easements in Frederick County. There you have it. And we can take any questions you may have on that as well. Any questions for John? Any? Thank you. And thank you for your work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at the end, I think, of our agenda. And I, I think we have a, a, a meeting to deal with, do we not, sir? That's right, Madam Chairman. I apologize for any confusion from our last meeting, uh, but the July 20th meeting would be the one uh, that hopefully we'll be able to cancel, uh, if that's a, uh, okay with the Planning Commission. So we need to cancel on the 20th. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. I think we're done. There's more to it. So Second. 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 Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Thank you all very much. <laughs>